It is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and today we got the season premiere of Stargirl Season 2, Episode 1. Now, actually, I believe it was yesterday, but because I don't have cable TV, I had to wait to watch it on the CW, and it was worth the wait. Now, initially, I was very concerned because I absolutely adored the first season. I thought it was done very well, but if you remember... It was going originally to DC Universe. All of that went away. It is strictly comics now, and all of their content goes to HBO Max. So it was going to be a CW property, and that had me worried. Now, after seeing Superman and Lois, I was less worried. That is absolutely a love letter to the fans, but so is this. In a very different way, so is this. They're both great quality shows, and that's something we haven't seen from the likes of The Flash or Supergirl or Batwoman or any CW show for that matter, and it's really nice to see. Now, of course, I am going into this a little cautiously optimistic, I would say. No, I'm just optimistic. Let's be real. It's me. So I want to talk about episode one, and I want to talk about everything that is new. If you remember last time. They defeated Brainwave and they had a beautiful little, you know, snowy scene at the end. She called him dad. And we saw Courtney and Pat and everybody all happy. So that takes us to season two. That was the worst TLDR ever, by the way. So I'm uh, apologizing. But we get a look at season two and it kind of was a little bit of a culture shock. I will say that because the last couple shows I have watched were WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and then Loki. So going into this, I was like, ooh, uh, is the quality not on all the way? Like Marvel has a very formulaic way of doing their cinematography very well, making the shots all, you know, kind of perfect and tonally all very similar. Going into this, it felt very different. At first, in a bad way. And then I think it separates it, and it actually makes the show kind of stand out. We get Courtney, who still is that overzealous teenager who wants to be Stargirl and defeat evil, and she wants to go above and beyond, and she does in a lot of ways. But she doesn't know how to really separate her her star girl life from school or from being a daughter or from being a friend. And right now, Yolanda really does need a friend. And we'll talk about that. But it was really nice to see this show come back. I really am enjoying it. We get quite a few Easter eggs. We get quite a few different things from the likes of uh, Eclipso. So let's let's start right into this and we're going to go through it. So spoilers for anybody that has not seen it yet. Click away. Come back at another time. But we're going to start with the opening scene and we see a little girl. It's a flashback, right? We see a little girl who's a little bit upset. Her mom won't let her go. Her mom won't let her go to the party across the street and she wanted to go. She got all dressed up cute, right? She was going to go and her daddy would have let her go, but she can't go. And then a little boy shows up out of nowhere, right? Out of nowhere, this little boy named Bruce shows up. And if you know anything about Eclipso, you know that his name is Bruce Gordon. Well, Bruce Gordon, in little teeny tiny form, shows up. By the way, good casting on the kid. He is ever so creepy. And we see him initially convince her to go across the street and almost get hit. And then we see him convince her to steal a present. And it's a dolly. And he transforms. And we see him transform. And he transforms. And we see her mother come running across. And he has taken her soul in, in, in Eclipse of Worm. I mean, we have to assume that she's dead. But as this is panning out, we actually get a glimpse at the mailbox and it says Midnighter. So what we were looking at was Dr. Midnight, his daughter, who, I, I, unbeknownst to me, had died. So we flash forward and we're back with the 
with the, with the Justice Society of America, what they are. Now, there are a few things I noticed when it comes to the casting. Obviously, it has not changed. Um, I did notice that Yolanda, and she is the oldest of the bunch, I believe. She's actually 25 or 26. And that happens a lot. They play younger people. But it looks like she got some lip injections. And she's a beautiful girl, don't get me wrong. But when you start injecting things that don't naturally belong in your body, other parts tend to sag. And she's kind of aging in her cheeks. And it looks very weird to have an aging high schooler. It just, you know what? I'll suspend this. <laughs> I'll suspend belief. So um, they kind of get irritated with each other, right? And um, no, not really. They get irritated with Courtney because Courtney is all about the JSA. And, and I guess if I had a staff like that, I would be too. But there's nothing to fight, right? They know the gambler and stuff is still out there, but there's nothing to fight. And they're just like, okay, you know, you were kind of done with this, right? Even Pat gets to the point where it's 4 a.m. She's down in the basement and she's looking through different paperwork and they show a lot of really cool things. They show the thinker. They show uh, gentleman's ghost. So I really like those Easter eggs for comic book fans. I think they do a good job of just putting in enough fan service to keep people happy. But he makes her go to bed. Of course he does, because she's a little girl really trying to do her best. And I and I can respect that. But she is so gung ho like she has not lost that throughout the entire season. It's it's completely 100 percent part of her character at this point. So. We see the next morning and they're going to go on vacation for two weeks, right? And one part I really liked about this is they name drop Jakeem again. If you remember in the first season, we saw them name drop Jakeem one time. And they actually mentioned his name twice in this episode. So we are getting Jakeem Thunder very, very soon. And and I'm curious to meet him. I, I really feel mad, bad for the boy. But they were going on vacation. They're not going to end up going on vacation. They can't leave Blue Valley or it would be a little bit of an upset. So we also see them, you know, we see Yolanda and she's having a very hard time right now. Basically, in the last season, she did kill Brainwave after he kind of manipulated her mind a bit. But it, she killed him and she's dealing with that. She, If you remember, she comes from a very Catholic family. So she keeps going into confession and not actually being able to talk. But there is some sort of connection there that she keeps feeling and she keeps hearing brainwave die. And she kind of asks, you know, did I do the right thing? Was it okay how I handled this situation? And Courtney's really not able to answer. And I don't know that I would be, but it's not... In my opinion, what she did was not murder, it's self-defense. And I do think there is a bigger difference there. And I think sometimes even for me, when it comes to DC characters, it's harder for me to separate any sort of killing. And I have to realize at some point, self-defense is just self-defense. It's not murder. So she's having a little bit of issues with that. So we go forward and we've got this weird guy. I don't get him yet. His name's Zeke. He's um, going to watch the, uh, <laughs> the the garage for some time um, if they were going to go. But like I said, they're not going to go on vacation. And he's asking a bunch of questions. He's being very weird. He's just kind of uh, yeah, just kind of strange. I'm not going to lie. He's a little weird. So they go back to school. And this is where we see really kind of, um, well, to begin with, we see um uh, our man rick, Ty rick tyler here he is uh uh took a test got every question right and she said he had to take it again because she thought he actually failed and he cheated and he refuses to and i don't blame him one bit but i don't know they really didn't allude either way which way he actually cheated or if he actually did it but i do think he did it and that's why it made him so angry so we find out because of her star girl escapade, she failed two classes. So they are not going on vacation. She has to go to summer school. And it starts the very next day. I feel like I'm just going to throw this out there. If you failed two classes, you'd probably know. Not only that, but you'd probably find out before the day you go to summer school. 
Just going to throw that out there. I get why it's in there, but it, it's kind of silly how it's done. So mom's man, Pat, he's like, you need to, you know, learn. You need to do better. Two weeks off of Stargirl. She's like, what do I do without Stargirl? Like she overworks herself and clearly she needs a break. Now, if you remember last time at the end of season one, we seen Starman return and we didn't know what he was doing. He was just looking for Pat. And he walks up into this diner and he asks this lady who used to be married to Pat and just says, I'm looking for your ex-husband. Now, I don't have a clue about this storyline. I don't know. There's been other star men before, but I don't know if he's looking for Pat because he wants to kill him because he kind of is creepy in this. Like, just a little bit. Or if he's just trying to find his old friend. I don't know. I, I kind of mixed on that one. So um, we see Cameron. He's back. He's around. You know, Courtney doesn't really want to get too close, but he does. She does want to talk to him. And they were friends before. They kind of had a thing going on. And the grandparents really don't like it because, you know, she was the reason why Brainwave, everything was foiled. And she was also... <laughs> You know, part of the reason why he's dead. So I kind of understand why they wouldn't want that. But we see the man that was supposed to, Zeke, basically be watching the garage. He goes in where he's not supposed to. He finds Stripe and he just wants to work on it. He's just like every man needs a robot. Like, no questions asked. I'm going to help you build a flamethrower. OK, all right. You build that <laughs> flamethrower. Like, I yeah. Yeah, everybody needs a good flamethrower, right? So um, we see here, and there's a little bit of exposition throughout this that, to kind of explain it, but there has been a couple different restaurants broken into and food raided, massive amounts of food raided, and they're blaming it on bears. Well, if you remember, and I feel like I've said that so many times, I apologize. In the last season, we saw Rick take on Solomon Grundy. And in doing so, he basically, you know, let him live. He couldn't do it. And now he's, you know, he knows who it is. He he has an idea that it's Solomon. And he takes some chicken. Like, dude buys, like, three big things of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Like, that's a lot of money. Like, I, he, he's got to be, like, the best friend ever. That is, that's, see, that's, like, $70 worth of chicken, Solomon. Like, you better be sending a thank you note or just something. Anyways, Beth. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is um. we need to talk about this. Beth, my heart and soul. Beth. So basically, a little bit earlier, she told her parents it was the last day of school and they barely even knew they were heading off to work. And it was super, super awkward, like super awkward. So. She picks up a paper and she sees divorce papers fall. So she thinks, you know, as the daughter here, she's going to she's going to get him a romantic dinner. She makes him a romantic dinner and neither of her parents show up. Neither one of them, nor do they have the actual guts to tell her what's going on. Like, I get she's young. I get it. 15, 16 years old. That's old enough to be honest with lying to your kids is one of the worst things you can do in that sort of a situation and unfortunately she's all alone last season she lost chuck she's been trying to get her goggles to work they work but it's just a generic ai and chuck isn't back so to make matters worse because they want to be mean to beth i swear if she doesn't get a redemption arc this season i'm gonna cry the goggles boot back up and Chuck shows up for a second, just for a second to say, I don't know who you are. Like my heart broke. My heart broke for this girl. I, I really like her character. She's bubbly. She's fun. She's over the top. You can tell she's very nerdy, like in the um, I don't know how to socialize well with others. So I hang out with my parents kind of thing. And my heart broke for her because that was her like a, Every, they did everything together. Obviously, he was goggles, but him saying, I don't know who you are. She just says, please don't forget me. And my heart's like, oh, poor Beth. We're going to get Beth help. So 
we see again, Courtney is looking for, you know, anybody that can have anything to do with anything. And in the house, we hear somebody come in. We actually saw a bit of this in the trailers. And that is dun, 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 Miss Jada showed up. Oh, I love it. And she looks stunning. Like she is absolutely beautiful. So um, it's a misunderstanding, but they, you know, basically tear apart the kitchen and fight for quite a while. And she realizes that her father is Alan Scott. And Courtney's like, yeah, um, I don't know what to do. And the parents come down the stairs a little bit and they're like, um, yeah, but th this is this is her dad's lantern. Yeah, she wants it back. So that's kind of where we end off with Courtney. Now, one thing I want to say about this part is I absolutely love it. For one, the music went great, beautiful on top of an absolutely sexy Cindy. But what drives me insane, and I and I understand for Courtney that she is kind of like, oh, what's the best way to put it? Like the girl next door, right? But why is it always with women are sexy, they're evil? Like it's always. Look at even using something more recent like uh, He-Man. <laughs> Look at Eva Lynn. She's the hottest one. She she She's beautiful. She's got, you know... I, I don't get it. It's a normal trope anymore, and it's a shame. But even so, she gets a paper out of the desk, and there's no way I'm going to get it perfectly, but it says Injustice Unlimited. And basically, Injustice Unlimited was the predecessor to Injustice Society of America, and it had, like, um, it had Brainwave 2 in it, but he's dead in this. And it had uh, the thinker in it. I, I can't remember right offhand. I know it had um, the fiddler. And I believe it had Icicle 2 in it also. I think there was a female in it, but I don't remember who. But even so, that, that doesn't matter. What we're seeing here is her wanting to actually do the recruiting. And it's funny because that is initially what we saw from Courtney in the first season. Let's do some recruiting, right? Now she's coming in, Cindy, and going, let's do some recruiting. So we see her, who she wants to recruit. Obviously, Brainwave's dead. So she goes to Cameron, and then she goes to the Fiddler's son. He got real weird at the end of the last season, right? And then she actually makes a choice I did not expect. And one, of course, was Artemis, which is um, which is uh, Sportsmaster's daughter in Tigress. So she'll be Tigress, too. Um and then, dun, 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 come on, Cindy, you can do it. We have somebody nobody expected. And that is actually their son. And I, you know, I kind of feel bad enough for him because he's going to go see Jakeem getting power and him still having nothing. I kind of feel bad enough for him. I just want him to get some sort of power and then maybe leave Injustice Unlimited. But. I can see how she's going to manipulate him with everybody else having power around her to do this. But I did think it was a good like wrench in the cog, right? You're able to kind of figure out what's going on. And then you're like, what the fuck are you thinking, Cindy? Huh? So I really, really enjoyed this. <laughs> like, I really did. I love these characters. I love them in the comic books. I know hopefully we're getting a new um, book <laughs> announced at some point. Um, either Jeff Johns or Robert Vendetti or something. We got a little teaser in the uh, spring break special for Stargirl, but I absolutely love this show. And I, I, I think it's definitely worth watching. It's on the CW app for free. So let me know, of course, what you guys thought of this little teaser that came in and or not teaser. I'm sorry, of this first episode that came in and what you're kind of theorizing for the future, because I think we're going to get Jade, obviously, in the JSA. And then I, I think we're going to see the sun actually go a little south before he goes north again. So let me know what you guys think about this. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.